Hi, Redeemer family. Uh, as I promised on Sunday, I wanted to give just a very quick video this week to explain uh, generally, sort of from a 30,000 foot view of some of what is going on within our denomination right now. Um, uh, let me say a couple of things before before I do. One, the, the reason for this video really is just a call to prayer for all of us as we gather together. This week in Dallas, our, our bishops are already there together in the College of Bishops. Um, and then Provincial Council, which is kind of like the uh, kind of the the business meeting of the uh, of the of our denomination, the Anglican Church in North America, uh, has our annual meeting this upcoming week as well. So Bishop Allen is already there and in meetings. Uh, I'll be headed down on Wednesday of this week uh, to uh, to be a part of things as well because of my role as canon for church planting within the province as well. So there's a lot of business things that we'll be taking care of, um, but. Um, but one of the things that that needs to be discussed is uh, is a disagreement within our senior leadership that is public in in uh, in some ways now as well. So, if you uh, if you don't care anything about this, if you don't want to be connected with that, if you like got too much going on, have other things to worry about, that's okay. Um, just pray for your senior leadership. Um, pray for me. Pray for Alan. Pray for our Archbishop, whose name is Foley, um, and so you can. Just just pray um, that, that the Lord moves and you can be done watching this video. Thanks for watching. Um, but if you do want some more information, I at least want to show you where to get it and give the briefest of commentaries on things uh, as as well. So so here's here's the um, multi-year story in just a few seconds is that um, a few years ago, allegations of sexual abuse were made um, against a lay person within the diocese of the upper Midwest. Um, and those claims were substantiated. That person is in jail. Um, uh, but there's been further questions about was the process of reporting investigation, all of those things was, was that handled properly as a diocese? And if it was, um, uh, are there, are, are there any further steps that need to be taken? If it wasn't, then does anybody need to help be held responsible for that? How does, what does that investigation look like? Um, uh, and so, so the Bishop of the diocese is Bishop Stuart Ruck. And so a lot of the question, of course, because he's the Bishop, then centers around him and his role in such things as well. So, um, so that's, there's been investigations and conversation and all kinds of things that have been going on, uh, surrounding that for the last couple of years. And, of course, we take every allegation of sexual misconduct very, very seriously. And, uh, and, uh, and as I said, the, the, the person at the heart of a lot of this has already been tried in, in uh, secular court, is in jail. What really the conversation that's happening right now is, um, is sort of a few levels removed from that. Um, and, and so the question is, is uh, were things handled properly within the diocese? And then how does the province, which is our denomination, the, the ACNA, the Anglican Church of North America, how, do, how does it handle then investigating and, and, uh, and in giving proper judgment towards a bishop and a diocese? Like, how does, that, how does that work together? We've never had to deal with this together as a denomination before. Um, and so the questions that are arising now is, is, the, is the proper process handled in investigating the investigation, right? And we're, again, we're a couple of, uh, a couple of layers removed from all of this. Um, and so, uh, we're going to put some links here for you as well. So you can read Archbishop Foley's email about this that came out recently. And his email has links to all of the, um, sort of the legal briefs of all of this. It's 70 something pages total of, lawyery kind of speech. And so uh, if, uh, if you're a lawyer and you want to read those things, great. Uh, they are very informative on sort of both sides of the issue. Um, but there's, there, what is at stake right now? Again, it's complicated is how does the constitution and canons of the ACNA tell us how to govern these processes of who gets to make decisions about who is investigated and how are investigations, um, uh, who's in charge of those investigations. And then what, what groups, there's a group called the tribunal. I know that's a big, 
that's a big word uh, that uh, uh, that that sounds very very official, um, but they're kind of the supreme court of the land as well. And what is their role? And what is the archbishop's role as kind of the executive officer? So it, the 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 parallels aren't aren't exact by any means. But the best metaphor I can give is sort of you have the executive branch of our denomination, which is the archbishop. Uh, and his office, and then you have a uh, a judicial branch in a way that is that is the tribunal that's called together. We have ecclesiastical courts, but then sort of the highest court in the land is uh, is the tribunal. And right now, the executive branch and the the judicial branch, the tribunal and the archbishop's office, are disagreeing about who has what authority to do kind of the proper investigation of things. So. Again, that was a very broad, broad view uh, of of all of this, and a lot of times organizations go through things like this as well, and it's never public, and it's uh, it's just it's things that organizations have to work through. If you run a business or a part of a business or even a family, like there's things like this that just have to be worked out and worked through, and sometimes you don't even know if your bylaws or canons or anything are a, are a are set up appropriately until they're tested um, in in a manner like this where there's disagreement. And so disagreement within within the church, as we just preached about a couple of weeks ago, um, has always been a part of the church because there is an aspect of um, none of us are omniscient, uh, none of us know everything, none of us are infallible either as well. And so there's going to be places where we might have differing views. And the question is, do we handle it properly as a church uh, to be able to honor one another, honor the Lord, be humble in prayer, uh, ask for the Lord's guidance, wait for him uh, to be able to work things out with this as well. Where do we, where do we lead? Where do we wait? Those are all issues of discernment. And do we have a heart of grace and mercy and also of truth and justice? And so what we need to pray for our leaders right now is as they're in this place of figuring these things out, proper procedure so that things are done in, in a correct manner that both, um, that both holds accountable and at the same time gives proper process that that uh, that for accusations that are made uh, to be to be vetted well and worked through together and then who who's responsible for all of that so the so the college of bishops is meeting and has to has to work through some of those things relationally together. The provincial council has to meet this week as well um, and so this will be on the agenda for that also um, so so this is why we're calling everyone to prayer. It's not, it's not a time to panic. Honestly, there's been other disagreements at other times. They just haven't been public in the same sort of way. But since this one has been, and and has and it, there's been emails that have gone out from the the denominations and su- the denomination and such as well. I thought it would be helpful to just just give you an overall explanation of what's going on and to go it's like it's okay we're we're going to work through these things together our senior leaders our bishops um our executive committees there's all kinds of names of denominational structures that exist they're working on these things and what we need to pray is that they work on these things well together and make proper decisions together and uh and and lead in in righteous ways uh so that we can see um unity and collaboration together uh as the church, that that our witness as the church to the world can be one that says, we're we're not going to be we're not going to be hypocrites who say we never disagree and then hide our disagreements, um, but that we're gonna we're gonna disagree properly um, and and work together to find solutions in a way that honors one another and God. So, so if you want to go even more deep than what I've more deeply even deeper uh, than what I've said to you as well. Follow these links, read the emails, read through the legal briefs. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have as well, although I will be traveling this week and so might be might be a little bit before I can get back with you, but feel free to email me about them or anything as well. Main thing, again, summary of this, uh, just be in prayer. Um, be in prayer for our leaders. Be in prayer that the Holy Spirit moves. Be in prayer for the unity of the church. Be in prayer that we can be about the things that we need to be about, which is loving Jesus well, reaching out to those who don't know him, being being the church properly and being the church on mission properly as well. Um, pray for Alan, uh, who uh, who we know and love dearly here as we are uh, as we are the cathedral of the diocese, and he is the bishop that is in residence here uh, and the planter of this church as well. Uh, pray for me as I go and play my role in this as well. So um, let's let's be a people that that are uh, appropriately optimistic about things and uh, and 
um, and be non-anxious presences where we are called to be and be people of prayer uh, and confident that, uh, that the church belongs to the Lord and that the very gates of hell will not prevail against it. Uh, and so let's, uh, let us disagree with confidence as well. So thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your love, for your generosity. Um, I just in, encourage a, a calm spirit about all things. And, uh, uh, and this, this too shall pass and, uh, and the Lord will lead us. I'm confident. So again, any questions, reach out. Um, but please do be in prayer, uh, for our denomination and our senior leadership and the tribunal and the archbishop. Um, uh, they, they need us to pray for them right now. Okay. And, uh, and, um, uh, I'm confident in our Redeemer family that we will be part of that prayerful solution as well. So I love you, um, and uh, and uh, it's a, it's sad when we have to talk about things that are difficult, but um, this is part of our life together as well in Christ. So bless you, and um, we'll see you on Sunday.